This is the discontinued Cotton Cordell Near Nothing. And on today's Collect and Catch episode of Retro Bassin, we're gonna see if this little thing is a piece of old school gold. Stick around. Retro Bassin, kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Bass boat making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. In 1952, Carl Ritchie Cotton Cordell founded Cotton Cordell Inc. and over the next three decades would go on to invent and market some of the most iconic lures in modern day bass fishing. If you watch this channel, you are definitely familiar with some classic Cotton Cordell baits like the Gay Blade, the Boy Howdy, the Crazy Shad, the Red Fin, the Hot Spot, and of course, the Big O. But on today's Retro Bass episode, we are going to take a look at a lost piece of old school gold from Cotton Cordell, and that is this neat little topwater bait for school and bass called the Near Nothing. This bait has been on my radar for quite some time. It is definitely one that uh, I have had my eye on even before I fished it. But it wasn't until I took a trip down to South Texas and visited Jim's Rebate Tackle and I saw a bunch of these hanging on the peg that I truly went collecting crazy for the near nothing. Jim had some great new in the package Cotton Cordell near nothings and I scooped up just about every one I saw still hanging on the peg. While I don't have an exact release date for the near nothing, it definitely came out a little bit earlier than I initially thought as it's got a nice little spread in the 1978 Bass Pro Shops Master Catalog. So there is a great half a page spread dedicated to the near nothing which is described as a surface lure, and we'll talk about it. It's definitely more than that. Uh, list price was $2.95, but you could get it in 1978 for $1.59. Let's see what the description says on the near nothing. Solid plastic lure that is weighted for long casts into schooling fish. Breaks on top with steady pumping retrieve. Cotton specifically recommends the crystal clear version. <laughs> that gave the near nothing its name. This bait in 1978 was available in four different colors. First, we've got the crystal clear, which by the way is a little bit different from the clear that uh, I have got in my collection. There's also a nice smoky joe color, a chrome black, and a pearl with blue eye. So at least as far as my collection is concerned, this is the first spread dedicated to the near nothing. Production of the bait definitely continued into the 80s, and by 1985, the Near Nothing spread had gotten a little bit smaller, and you'll notice that the colors changed as well. So here in 1985, it is more, I would say, about a quarter page spread on the Near Nothing. It's got the same description as before. Uh, at this point, the uh, list price was up to $4.80, and the Bass Pro Shops price was $2.99. It does have the weight length. Looks like it's a half an ounce and two and a quarter inch bait. Now, this is interesting. It does come in three colors. It's got chrome and black. It's got a clear with a red eye as well as this nice smoky Joe pattern. So similar patterns to what was available in 78 with definitely a few minor variations. The Near Nothing was eventually discontinued sometime before the 1990s, and this thing definitely commands a pretty penny on the secondary market. I do have a number of these in the package, which I'm going to leave in the package, and I've got some out of the package that we are going to take on to Lake Travis. Having not thrown this bait too often before, uh, I'm definitely kind of curious as to how it is going to perform on the water today. It is a topwater bait. There are a ton of schooling bass out on Lake Travis at the moment, including both largemouth and white bass or hybrid bass. There's still a little bit debate about that in the old bass and bud community as to exactly what those fish are. 
But this is going to be a very interesting bait to throw. I'm really curious to see which color is going to perform. I've got the clear here. I've got that nice chrome. And here is the all pearl white Smoky Joe pattern. Nice little black back on that guy. Definitely stick around till we get back from the water though. Uh, I am going to go through these baits in a little bit more detail and also um, we're going to do something that uh, we kind of start doing on this channel and that is I'm going to list a, a few of these baits as well as some other Cotton Cordell classics on eBay for a dollar and I will tell you about that listing at the end of the video. All right, well, we are on the water. The sun is uh, just climbing up over those treetops. It's a little bit overcast, so I probably couldn't see it even if it already had climbed. I do have a few spots that I wanna try a little bit up lake, but uh, before the sun gets too high in the horizon, I do wanna fish a few of these points and pockets with some old school top water. I am going to uh, get the camera turned around, hopefully get some all the water shots. I know I don't do nearly a good enough job of kind of getting the uh, top water strikes in action, it's harder than you think, but we'll do our best today and hopefully get a fish or two on some old school topwaters. All right, I've got a pretty cool old school topwater tied on and actually one that I have not yet caught a fish on. This is a discontinued bait from Cotton Cordell called the Near Nothing. At first glance, it looks like a traditional topwater bait, except it is solid and it sinks. It is the perfect bait, I think, for schooling fish like these white bass. I've got them in a couple different colors, including white, silver, but I'm gonna start off with the old clear. Whew. Oh, I already saw fish, I already saw fish. Oh, oh, oh. Come on near nothing, let's get something. What's so wild about this bait is it does make a few splashes, but because it sinks, you've got to fish this thing pretty fast to keep it on top. But when you pause it, oh, oh comes a little underwater walker. And I think it's gonna get a fish, man. Woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. Try to walk it like this. Oh, that actually works a little bit better. I'm keeping my rod tip super high and I'm just kind of skipping it right on the top. Oh, and a fish just jumped up there. Ho, 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 ho. Let's go. Come on, son. Let's get it done. There we go. That's going to get one. Man, there are fish busted all around me. I just gotta figure out how to properly work this bait. It reminds me a little bit of another Cotton Cordell bait, a similar bait for schooling fish called the Blue Striper. That one's a bigger version of this basically same kind of thing, where it's a topwater skittering type bait that sinks. My struggle now is I just don't know how fast to fish this thing. We gotta get one on top today. I don't care what else happens. We gotta get one of these white bass on top. All right, another little adjustment I'm gonna make now is because this thing sinks so fast, the second it hits the water, honestly, the second before it hits the water, I'm engaging the reel and I'm starting to work the lure back toward me. Hopefully that's gonna keep it up on the surface a little bit. That's where I think 
I want this bait. There he is! Got one! Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> he just slurped it! I don't even know if he made a splash! Oh man! Oh, that's a large mouth! Yeah, buddy! That is a large mouth! Let's get him in! <laughs> Let's give you one of those shows. Oh man, that was a, uh, that was a honey of a large mouth. <laughs> he wasn't that big, but that was a cool fish. Oh man. Uh. <laughs> Every time. I even had the net. You saw that, right? I even had the net because I've been losing a fish or two on a treble hook at the boat. And, uh, well, I, I retroed him. <laughs> Rats. Uh, let's try that again. Got another one. Yeah, buddy. Got another fish. I better not lose this one. <laughs> yeah, buddy. What is that? <laughs> well, it's a, a different species than the first fish, but it's uh, still a fish, so that's good. <laughs> All right. All right, well, there is our first official fish of the day. Uh, I had a nice large mouth, like a little two pounder, but I uh, jumped him at the boat. But first one on the near nothing. Man, nice little white bass. Awesome. Oh, well, I think we're gonna have some fun today, huh? <laughs> All right, well, there we go. Uh, pretty, pretty little white bass. Get him back in and uh, see if we can get another. It's funny how it works sometimes, but uh, literally the boat ramp is right there and just about every other bass boat that I see launching today is just running and gunning upriver. If I don't have to crank up the big engine again, I'm not gonna. We'll see how the morning goes here, but uh, I don't mind not going too far. <laughs> Got another one. Oh, 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 yeah, buddy. What is that? Woo! It's got a little pull on it. I wonder if that's another uh, white bass. We'll see. Yeah, I think so. Oh! No, it is not. First uh, topwater largemouth of the year. That is, uh, well, <laughs> hopefully not the biggest bass I catch today. Well, pretty little guy. Look at him. <laughs> oh, about a one-year-old. See you, buddy. Oh, oh big fish, big fish. Oh, that's something big. What is that? That's a big fish. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, big old white bass. <laughs> oh, man, those things hit so, so hard. I was almost certain that was gonna be a large mouth and it wasn't, that's pretty wild. Uh, let's get this dude unhooked. All right, another, another nice little white bass on Lake Travis. I don't know if I have just been targeting these guys wrong over the years, but I have never had a lot of luck trying to find and catch these fish. But uh, we are on them a little bit today. Not too bad. All right, it's been a minute since we had a hit. I'm going to try to get back up in the zone here. I do feel like there's still uh, enough fish activity to justify throwing top water. And hopefully if the sky conditions stay like this, I'll be chunking a wind in this little thing all day.
So while we have just a brief lull in the action, hopefully a brief lull in the action, I will talk about some of my initial impressions of this near nothing on the water. Well, what I don't like about it, I'll start with that, is you do have to fish this thing pretty, pretty quick. That old school topwater tactic of throwing a bait out there and waiting till the rings dissipate before you move it does not work with this thing. It is really a just chunking and winding, skipping this thing in, working fast for schooling fish kind of bait. That's the downside. Uh, again, if the fish aren't into that. What I like about it, especially shallow water, clear water fishing, is it does live up to its name of near nothing. This bait has a very minimal impact on the sort of fishing situation, and I don't feel like I'm blowing up a spot. You know, sometimes you throw in a top water or a prop bait, you feel like you're just sort of frothing the water and the fish kind of figure it out. This thing is relatively low impact, and I feel like I could throw it pretty often in a given area without spooking the fish, which is huge. <laughs> well, watch out, that near nothing can be, uh, can be deadly. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, whoops. All right, line's good. I just missed another one. I think I was a little white bass. Oh, big old large mouth. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's a big old large mouth. Oh man. Come on, buddy. Oh, yes! Ooh, I saw that hit. Oh, son. Whew. That might just be the craziest largemouth bass hit I have seen in a while. Wow. Let's get him in. Get a look at him. Holy smokes. Well, that is a gorgeous, gorgeous Lake Travis largemouth on the old cotton cordell near nothing. And look, I uh, nearly didn't have him hooked. He's just, uh, yeah, just barely hooked. <laughs> well, that was super, super cool. I was kind of changing up my approach with the near nothing just a little bit. I was actually killing it and letting it sink down literally about four foot off the bow of the boat this guy came up and just smacked it oh man good morning to you buddy <laughs> Woo. let's let him go i do have the near nothing in a couple of different color variations and you know just with heck of it i'm going to throw a couple of these different ones so here is a chromed out near nothing it's got a little bit of texture on it uh, here is a sort of pearl or the black back. That one might pop well. And then I've also got this one, a just straight up chrome. I know those white bass love a chrome bait. Um, I might wait till the sun comes out just a little bit for this one. Uh, I think I might, uh, I might toss this guy right now. All right, we've got our little pearl and black near nothing tied on. See if this makes a difference. Well, this one does jump well though. I don't know if this plastic is a little bit lighter, but it definitely is fishing a little bit higher in the water column than the clear near nothing. Huh. Ooh. Still a sinking bait, but that's almost like a different lure. Huh. Wow. Okay, so no hit on the white near nothing. I guess maybe that looked like near something. So I'm going to go ahead and tie that chrome on. I'll probably end up going back to the clear at some point today, but uh, I might as well give that chrome a try, especially since I think white bass like just about anything silver. All right, let's see what this chrome can do. 
Okay, nothing on the chrome either. It could just be the conditions. It could be the fish aren't hitting as much on top, but um, I got a hard time not going back to the one that got me the first couple fish, and that is the clear. One. Oh man. Woo. <laughs> well, there we go. Uh, another white bass for the tally. That was a pretty interesting hit. He swiped at it a couple times on top, like three times, and I didn't get him. So I decided to let that near nothing sink down. It sank down three feet, and he hit it at the very bottom of the sink. That's awesome. And he really, really got it deep. Maybe I've been fishing the near nothing wrong all day long. I've probably missed about as many fish as I've boated, and I really been fished this thing on top nonstop. Well, on this particular fish, he swiped at it a couple times, didn't get it, I let it sink three feet, and look how deep he ate it. He wanted that thing, oh man. <laughs> we were able to get him unhooked without too much damage. We'll let him go, but uh, another beautiful, a little white bass on the day. Woo! Oh! Got one! There he is! Woo! <laughs> Weirdest topwater hits because they slurp it when it's under the water and you just don't even see it a lot of times. But that is a uh, probably a little white bass, I'm thinking. Maybe? Oh yeah! Oh, tank of a white bass. Oh, man. Look at that beauty. Woo! <laughs> when these guys are hungry, they are hungry. Man. Well, with one more fish at the buzzer, let's head on back to the Retro Bass Studio, take a deeper look at the near nothing. All right, we're back in the studio from Lake Travis. That was definitely a fun little trip. And honestly, I could have thrown that near nothing all day. That was a blast to fish. Definitely learned a few things about the bait and I think it'd probably be much more effective my next outing with it. So we're gonna break down the bait itself, talk a little bit about my thoughts of it and also the construction of it. But first, I do want to show you guys the bait that I referenced, which kind of sent me down uh, the pathway toward investigating the near nothing. And that is this cotton cordell bait called the blue striper. Now, the blue striper may look uh, quite different from the near nothing, but in many ways, these baits are very, very similar. The blue striper is a surface slash subsurface walking bait. It is weighted and it sinks. So just like the near nothing, it is perfect for casting a country mile into fast biting, fast acting, breaking fish. Obviously it's got a different profile, a little bit more of a shad profile here. The, uh, I would say nose of this thing looks different and it is a heck of a lot bigger than the near nothing. But this bait kind of got me thinking about the possibilities of a sinking topwater. Fast forward to my little trip to Jim's Rebate Tackle when I picked up a few of these new in the package. And yes, uh, not to disappoint the near nothing, definitely fished a lot like a smaller version of the Blue Striper. So let's break this bait down. First, sort of the way that it's constructed and also some of my on the water observations of it. This is a solid plastic bait. It's got a nice little scooped head. I would say similar to a, a Head and Lucky 13 with perhaps a little bit less of a bottom lip. It's equipped with a pair of number six treble hooks, a feathered hook on the back, and these are actually both been replaced by me. But the magic of this bait is what's inside. Now this one is clear, so you can sort of get an idea of what's going on here. 
and this is really what makes this bait so magic on the water. It is a solid plastic bait with a wire harness that goes all the way through. It's a little bit hard to tell because of the oxidation that happened in here, but this is a weight and this is actually an air bubble. I'm not sure if that air bubble is intentional or not, or just happens to be sort of a byproduct of the manufacturing process. Here is one that is in the package, and you can see perhaps a little bit clearer that weight in the tail of the bait, and then just sort of that random air bubble hanging out there. I still don't know if that is on purpose or just sort of the way that it happens during the molding process. This bait does come in a number of different colors, but like cotton, I am definitely partial to this one. It has a really neat look underwater, and I didn't really appreciate it until I watched the underwater footage of this thing kind of scooting along, and it does almost disappear into nothing when it sinks down, which I think emulates some of the smaller bait fish that those white bass and largemouth were keying on on the lake today. So a couple different ways to fish this that I've noticed. One is that you can definitely cast it out there and scoot it on the surface. The key is I think you've got to A, have your rod tip up pretty high and you've got to engage that reel almost instantly when it hits the water. It does have a propensity to sink, sort of like a buzz bait, and you've almost got to have that thing coming toward you by the time it hits the water. Otherwise, you're spending about half the cast trying to get it up to the surface. That is one way to fish it. Uh, but later in the day, I actually got a few fish and definitely some more strikes letting it sink down. I would scoot it on the surface for a while, pause it, and then the bait would sort of drift away from me with all oh, this little shimmy. The last largemouth of the day I got, I feel like it was like two or three feet below the surface as this thing was sinking. And that is definitely something that I would explore in a future outing with this bait. By the way, Bass and Buds, if you are familiar with this bait and you've got any experience on how to fish it, I would definitely love some feedback. Uh, let me know what I was doing right, what I was doing wrong, and maybe what I should do next time I'm on the water with the near nothing. Uh, now to a, a little thing we've been doing on the channel, and this is sort of an effort to share some of the old school gold that I've gotten, and also lighten my tackle collection a little bit. It is um, definitely getting out of hand around here. I have got three different Cotton Cordell new in the package baits that I just put up on eBay the other day. There is a jointed red fin, there is a blue striper, and of course a clear near nothing. I've also thrown in a retro bass decal and I started the listing off at $1 plus shipping. I think at this point it may be up to three or four bucks, but still not too bad for those three lures. Speaking of Cotton Cordell, I stumbled upon a great article on Bass Fishing Archives, and it was a Cotton Cordell catalog walkthrough. Terry did a great job of scanning that catalog in, and I will drop a link to that article down below, but definitely head on over to Bass Fishing Archives if you want to check it out. And after you check that article out, definitely drop a comment down below, and let me know what Cotton Cordell bait you would like to see featured next on the Collect and Catch episodes of Retro Bassin. If you're looking for more old school content, click right here. Otherwise, I will see you right back here, same time, same place. And until then, keep the carpet side up. And definitely, fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin.